Hello and welcome to HealthyHouseplants.com where we teach you all about gardening in the great indoors. If you'd like to support our show, please use our Amazon affiliate link below. Today we are going to talk about Venus flytrap, a very cool plant that I've grown since I was a little kid, and how to uh, keep these plants healthy and happy in your indoor garden and, and, uh, it, and, and how to have fun with them as well. So uh, when I started indoor gardening as a kid, um, once I mastered some of the easy plants, I gravitated towards the trickier Venus flytrap. It's fairly easy to grow if you know what you're doing. If you don't know what you're doing, uh, it can die pretty quickly. So we're gonna talk about that for you. Um, uh, as I mentioned in uh, my video, my plant stories video on this with the history of the Venus flytrap, I became very popular in middle school because of my Venus flytrap that people would come to, over to my house to feed after school. So it is a very fun plant and it makes a really nice science project uh, for um, um, and along those lines as well for, for young kids and for older kids too gardeners in general. This plant is uh, actually native to a hundred mile area along the coast of South and North Carolina and they cannot be found anywhere else. So they are from uh, the United States and nowhere else. Uh, they've even talked about putting them on the endangered species list. Uh, I don't know if they have, but, but because of their, their very uh, limited range from where they, where they are found. They uh, grow, uh, they are dormant for part of the year. So they're actively growing at this time of the year. However, they do go, they will go dormant for you. So the, um, when it gets a little bit cooler. So they're dormant from November through March and actively growing from April through October. So if you've had one in about November, you thought it died, it didn't die, it just went dormant on you and it will come back next year. So we'll talk about that a little bit too. So as mentioned, so this is a carnivorous plant. It grows six to eight inches in diameter. So it's not gonna be big, it's not gonna be big. So if you've been waiting for your plant to get really huge, it's not gonna get really, really big. This is a smaller one here. It has tooth traps that you see here. And those tooth traps actually have a little bit of a sticky, sweet smelling substance in them. And that lures flies and other insects to them. And what happens when they, they hit in, in within the trap, there's little trigger hairs that get triggered and that will cause the trap to close on the insect. And then the plant re releases juices that then digestive juices, just like we have in our stomach, that will then break down the, the, the insect and feed the plant. So that's um, how that whole cycle works. And I even have a fly that I caught on a fly trap that I'm going to uh, um, uh, feed to the plant in a minute too to give it a little snack. So the, in terms of keeping them healthy and happy, okay, so they do require bright light. So you want bright light from an Eastern or Western or Southern exposure window. Be careful with the, the Western windows. They can get a little hot. So you want to go back two or three feet. You may have to do that with your Southern windows as well. Eastern windows, you can put them up pretty close. They like that real bright light. If you don't have enough bright light, get some full spectrum light bulbs. They simulate daylight and you can put them in just about any fixture. So that's a really fast and easy way to solve the lighting problem for you. Now, where things go awry when you are uh, growing a Venus flytrap indoors, and this is generally why they do die, is they are very sensitive to high salts and minerals in the water. So avoid tap water. Uh, and also definitely don't use any, any um, 
water that has been softened because softened water has salts in it. You don't want to use softened water on any houseplants actually, but it would definitely kill this guy off really quick. So what you want to use is reverse osmosis, distilled or rainwater. You always want to keep it in about a quarter of an inch of water so that it remains wet. So you can see with this one, it's in some water here. Uh, and this is uh, reverse osmosis water so that the it remains wet at all times because this is coming from boggy conditions they grow naturally in boggy conditions so uh, letting them dry out is the f another quick way to death so that's what you want to do in terms of watering and as I mentioned it's probably the biggest reason for their demise the feeding them so feeding them they don't require fertilizer. They're getting their nutrients from eating insects. Uh, and you can also feed them. You, I, when I was a kid, I didn't know any better. I gave him hamburger. Uh, but it's better not to do that because that will prematurely rot the, the, uh, the, the little um, leaves and the traps themselves. So, uh, so uh, what you really want is live food or s food that died not too long ago uh, that you can put in there. One thing, the sow bugs, the little pill bugs, I've used those. Those are kind of easier to catch than things like a fly, but on a fly trap, you can, you can do that with a fly. So I'm gonna show, I'm gonna, we're gonna feed this fly trap right now and see how that works out for us and going to do that i'm taking off with tweezers here got the little fly okay so you do have to initiate trigger the fly trap and that it it did it but the fly didn't make it in so it's a little tricky um the fly's cut in, caught, the fly's partially caught there. So if I can take off, this is kind of gross, but um, I'm removing part of the fly. Okay, I've got a piece of the fly. Okay, and now I'm going to do it again. Let's try this guy. So here we go. Hopefully it'll work this time. So now the, it, you do need the triggers, like I said, to get those trigger hairs. Okay, there, it went, it went in. Okay, so now what's gonna happen is the plant is going to release the digestive ju juices as mentioned and will start to break down the fly and use that as nutrients. One thing you don't wanna do with these guys, even though it's a lot of fun, is use something and poke it in the trap to see it close. Because what happens is when it closes, it's gonna stay closed for a while. It will uh, close for up to 24 hours. And it can. what happens is a lot of times you're gonna lose that, that trap because it lets out all these digestive juices and it doesn't get anything. So it will prematurely die back on you and blacken so if you can uh, i know it's 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 tempting but if you can feed it when you're doing that to see it close rather than just playing around with it to watch them all close uh, it's not not suggested to do that maybe once just to see the fun of it and then go get some food for your plant after that will the flies automatically go to the fly trap well this one went to the fly trap instead at the window so you never know but i, I have it i have seen that happen as well just wanted to show you today um, what it looks like when you do it yourself so that is something you can do get a these are clear put them on windows the flies tend to gravitate towards the windows and then you can catch the fly and you can even get the fly uh, this one happened yesterday, so it wasn't alive, but you can even get the fly where it's still alive and put it into the fly trap uh, that way as well, um, off, of the, off, of the, off of the fly trap into the other fly trap. So that is uh, how you feed your fun, fun, fun fly trap, Venus fly trap. You do want to repot biennially, so every two years you want to repot your Venus flytrap about every two years at the end of the plant's dormancy. So in either January or February, put it in a plastic pot uh, with one part perlite, one part horticultural sand, and two parts peat moss. 
Very important to use horticultural sand because that does not have salt in it. You can't go to the beach and get sand. It's high in salt and you'll kill it pretty quickly. So one part peat, two parts peat, one part perlite, one part horticultural sand. Wet the mix before planting and then replant your Venus flytrap in it and it will continue to do really well for you. You may only want to put it in the same size pot if it's about the same size as, as before and it's just pretty much maintained. If it gets gotten a lot bigger, you can put it into a little bit bigger size pot. That's fine too. So that gives you some really good ideas for keeping the Venus flytrap happy and healthy. Have fun with your Venus flytrap. Thank you for stopping by today. Please leave any comments about any indoor gardening tutorials you'd like to see. Remember to like, comment, subscribe, and share this video. And please check the bell when we release new videos.